You know, it's one of the inspirations for me going into science. So you sort of have to go, wow, this actually happened. Picking up the stuff. <laughs> That's one small step for man. I'm Sarah Russell and I'm a research scientist at the Natural History Museum looking at the formation and evolution of the solar system and the evolution of the moon. My name is Marissa Lowe and I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester and I look at volcanoes on the moon. I'm Wally Funk and I'm part of the Mercury 13 testes from back in the 60s. I was being processed to see how girls could pass to be into space. NASA said, you're doing great, you've passed all the tests, but we can't take you because you don't have an engineering degree. For the Apollo 11 landing, I was two years old, so I'm not sure that I remember it. I do remember seeing the liftoff and the going around in the, earth, in the atmosphere and the landing. That was, think it was fantastic. So when the moon landings took place, I wasn't born. <laughs> We're going to have a look at a, a film of the highlights of the Apollo 11 landing. He's being told what to do when you're coming down for a landing. It's just like when I'm coming in for an airplane landing. You can see they're just sort of landing into an area with absolutely no craters. You can see the dust starting to come up now, so it's actually really hard to see anything on the surface. The eagle has landed. Eagle's landed! Classic line, eagle has landed. <laughs> Amazing. It must be such an emotional moment. It's just incredible. Very, very fine grained as you get close to it. Almost like a powder. So this is really interesting. He's Brown describing man. what the surface uh, is like here. Much. So this would have been the first time that someone had seen what the lunar regolith is like. So the lunar regolith is like the soil that's on top of the surface of the moon. And it actually turned out to be super powdery. And actually the powder got everywhere, got all over their suits. They got something? They love it. They've got the flag up now, and you can flag see the birds uh, on the flag up now. Yeah. <laughs> I know when they left, the flag actually fell down. Forty feet out, I'd say out to the end of that next. Uh, oh, it's gonna be main pace, might be. Now they're just experimenting of different ways to walk around the moon. But this may be a function of the suit. I know they tried, they experimented with jumping around and walking around. Okay, so they're collecting a core tube sample. So we do this for a lot of rocks and actually glaciers on Earth as, say, ice or rocks are deposited and formed over time. That's recording a history as you're going deeper into the ground. So these cores are giving us more information than we could just get at the surface. And we're still studying these rocks now, 50 years later, we're still... Uh, working on them. Uh, they're, I guess, lifting off. Yep. Amazing. Wow, thank you. How does That's it really feel, good. How does it feel to watch it? It actually feels really emotional because I actually, I'm not sure that I have seen that. I haven't seen that for decades, to be honest. I can't imagine what it must have been like to watch this live. What I remember really struck me was the adults all seemed so excited about it. I honestly didn't know that adults were capable of having that emotion. How new was the kind of flight they had to do for this then compared to, you know, the conventional tradition? There's no comparison. They were going into space by v by rocketry. They were just kind of ahead of their time, but they were doing what they needed to do to get into space and to get to the moon. When Kennedy said in 61, we're going to get a man on the moon by the end of the decade, that must have seemed unbelievable. You get kind of overwhelmed by what an amazing achievement it was. I knew all the tests that those guys had to go through because I beat them on many, many of the tests, the physical and the mental tests. Even nowadays, we're still thinking of ways of landing on the moon. Um, it's not it's not a given. Um, the success rate of moon landings isn't 100%. You can't jump from there to the Apollo. You have to learn to fly, you have to learn to fly jets, and you have to understand how the gravity works. So you just don't jump in there and go up there. It's really hard to say what our field would be like without moon landings, but my, I'm not sure that we would even have a field without the moon landings. During each of the Apollo missions, they placed several seismometers around the landing site. Using these seismometers, they've been able to deduce the internal structure of the moon. And before the Apollo missions, this is something we didn't have a grasp on at all. 
Before Apollo, we had no idea how the moon got there. We didn't know how it formed, this giant impact of a Mars-sized body into the Earth that smashed into it and then splashed material out that coalesced to form the moon. I think it's, that's an that's amazing scientific achievement of Apollo. I was speaking to someone who works at the Goddard Space Flight Centre a couple of weeks ago, uh, and they were saying that they're using an Apollo 16 core that's never been opened before. It was closed on the moon, this sample, and now it's going to be opened by her. Lots of countries are interested in going back to the moon, which is great because there's still so much that we don't know about the moon. So the Apollo missions only looked at a tiny bit of the moon. They looked at the near side and the equator. We've only scratched the surface. It's wonderful what they're all doing and what they plan to do. And many books I have signed, where do you want your kids to go? Well, they wanted to be astronauts. Getting to watch a live moon landing would be amazing. I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for Apollo, but I don't know that I'd be a research scientist. Martin, please, command coming 